Today we're taking a first look at the brand new 2023 Marin San Quentin II. I know you guys are excited for this. So am I. It's the San Quentin revised and improved. Woo! Let me get all the packaging stuff off and then we'll talk a little bit more about this bike. I'm excited. This came with pedals and they're solid pedals. These are nylon platform pedals with replaceable pins. I really love that. A lot of bikes don't come with pedals because some people are going to throw clipless pedals on and some people aren't. It helps them save money. It helps them save weight when they weigh it without pedals. But good for Marin for including pedals with this and good pedals. And this bike is priced and I would say targeted at a lot of first riders who have a, a reasonable budget, not the bare bones budget, but they're not able to go spend thousands and thousands and thousands on their bike. So what they're wanting is a bike that's ready to ride right out of the box, not something that they get home and then realize, oh shoot, I got to spend 50 to to $100 on pedals. That stinks. Awesome. Good job, Marin, for including pedals on that. All right, it's all built up. This is the 2023 Marin San Quentin 2. This is a 27.5 bike meant for playing and having fun. Marin's motto is made for fun, and the San Quentin embodies that so well. When this first came out, it was pretty revolutionary. Hardcore hardtails were non-existent. We pretty much only had XC hardtails. So the San Quentin really broke a lot of barriers. I remember when it first came out just thinking, that is exactly what I've wanted in a hardtail for so many years. And they've improved upon it for 2023. Although I haven't reviewed the older model on the channel, I have ridden a few of them. And I felt like they were good, but not great. They were missing a couple things. And Marin's done a lot of the things that I would have liked to have seen done to the last one. For example, it's one degree slacker, plenty slack. I don't think we need to go even slacker than this. It's got a taller fork, 10 mil more travel, 140 fork on here. So the stack's a little bit higher. I always felt like the stack was really low on the San Quentins before. And that's kind of the dirt jumper vibe. You know, dirt jumpers have a low stack. They're compact, they're small feeling. But uh, as a mountain bike, it just felt a little uh, low in the front. And I, I had found it harder to manual and just lift up and get over things. Um, and so I'm excited to see that taller stack. They've also increased the standover. So they've lowered this top tube. We've got a straight seat tube so we can run longer droppers with more drop and fit more size riders on each frame. So especially short-legged riders like myself, it's gonna be a lot easier to straddle the frame, get off in an emergency situation. So bravo Marin for lowering that as well. There are three San Quentins in the lineup. The one is the entry level one. It's got quick release dropouts. I'm not a big fan of that. You know that on the channel. And when Marin said, which one do you want? Can we send you a three? I said, actually, I'd really like the two because I'm looking for more budget bikes in the sub $2,000 category. And I want to see how the two stacks up. The two's got the same exact frame as the three. So in theory, I mean, if you could upgrade everything and have the same exact bike as a three one day, so same frame, same bones. And really that's the life of a bike, especially a hardtail. So when I do reviews, I focus more on the frame than components, but I will talk about components as well today. So I decided to go for the San Quentin 2 because it was the most economical one that had the through axle boost. My advice for people buying a new bike is to make sure your rear axle is a through axle. Just start there and move on up. And I think you should have a dropper as well. And I also think you should have an air adjustable fork, which we don't have on this. This is a set spring rate. It's the same spring rate in the fork. So whether you are a petite 100 pound woman learning how to ride or a football player that weighs 320, you get the same fork and expecting that fork to perform the same for both people is not, you know, you're not going to get the same performance as if you could adjust it and tweak the pressure to match your body weight and your riding style. So like I said, we've got the same frame as the San Quentin 3, which is their flagship San Quentin. We've got 11 speed Dior with a nice wide range cassette. I'm a big fan of that. We've got some Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. We've got a dropper that is awesome. I think a dropper is more important than a fork even. So having a dropper is awesome. Uh, we got a one by, so no front derailleur. It's got beautiful graphics. I really like the look of this San Quentin too. So the cable routing has these little, I don't know, two or three centimeter straws that it goes into in the beginning of the frame here. And then it's loose in there and it pops out in this little port here underneath the down tube and all the cables come out and then they route underneath the chain stays from there. The dropper comes through here. One thing I would love to see companies start doing, I don't think they're ever gonna do it, but I'd love to see it. It's what I did on my Maniac 
and there's a hole on my bike, on my Maniac that I designed, between the seat tube and the down tube, and you can fish it right through there so it stays all internal. Doesn't rattle, gets you a little more drop, and it doesn't come out under the bottom bracket, which I really like. Anyway, that's a lot to expect for a $1,500 bike. So the routing is all internal in the down tube, and then it's all external in the chainstay area. And they've got ports here that are plugged up if you run your bikes moto style or euro style, where the rear brake is on the left. You can run that into here and have it go that way. Pretty cool to see they thought of that as well. My personal preference, I'd love to see everything external, but I'm a rare breed. Most people would rather have internal cable routing because it looks a little bit cleaner. I like experimenting a lot. I like tweaking things, swapping brakes, and I do all my own mechanics. And so personally, I like external a little bit more, but this does look clean. So Marin's done some really great things on this bike, namely 27.5, great geometry, dropper post, We've got that beautiful Dior 11 speed drivetrain in the rear. You're not gonna need to upgrade that anytime soon. I know a lot of people are gonna think, well, 12's better than 11. Most people can't tell the difference. This Dior 11 speed would be just fine for me on all my bikes. It's a little bit heavier than like really, really nice drivetrains, but that shouldn't be an issue at all. We've got 170 mil cranks, one by drivetrain. I love that it came with these pedals. We got a nice riser bar. I love that they've got all of these stem spacers here so we can have up to 30 mil of effective stack height change. I love that they kept that long. What are some things that could be better about this bike? The first one being the fork. This is not an air adjustable fork. So that means you can't change the spring rate of it. You can't add air pressure to it and change it. And that is such a bummer. If you're in the, I'm going to say 160 to 190 pound range, I'll bet this rides pretty good. But if you're outside of that, I think you're going to be wishing for a little bit more adjustment. The only adjustment we've got on the fork is a rebound adjustment. One other thing that I think Marin could do better is there's just small things that make it feel cheap. And I don't mean inexpensive. I just mean like, like you're not like totally proud of it compared to like a nuke proof scout where everything just looks perfectly dialed like the head badge is a little bit crooked and the stickers that go on on the rims aren't quite centered and they're not quite they're not quite straight and it's just little fit and finish things that like that that you're like oh man if they'd spent two percent more time it would have turned out looking a little bit better and i'd have been a little bit more proud to own a marin and something about the head badge looks off it looks like it's got one of those protective stickers you can peel off but it doesn't it's almost like they clear coated it but it just doesn't quite look right. It's like there's a cloudy film over it. And uh, yeah, it's just just little things like that that are kind of like, oh, bummer, that's too bad. And like I said, this crooked head badge, it just looks off, just looks a little weird. And, you know, maybe that's part of how they hit this price range. But those are two things that I think could be improved. I'm reluctant to mention price because every time I mention price and I release the video, the price has changed. At the time of filming, this bike was $14.99 US. That is very affordable for a hardtail. Now, I know that's not inexpensive. That's still a lot of money for a lot of people. But for what you get, there's not many other bikes that can come close to what they provide. So dropper post, tubeless ready wheels, 11-speed um, drivetrain, 140 fork. You know, you could go out and rip the trails on this thing without having to upgrade much. That said, if you're riding a lot, like twice a week, after six or seven months, I think you're going to find yourself wishing a couple of these components were better, mainly the fork. I've got no problem with this dropper. I've used it before. I've got no problem with these brakes. I'm not crazy about the shape and size of the levers, but now we're nitpicking. But it's got a nice short stem. Marin's got nice components on their bars. I think they've done a really, really great job for the price. Would I pay $200 more for an air adjustable fork? Absolutely. And so... You know, when you're trying to hit that under $1,500 price point, you've got a really tough job, and I don't envy Marin. They could have put this with no dropper and upgraded the fork, or they could have put a cheap drivetrain on there that's not the Dior 11 speed and upgraded the fork. There's always give and take. And so I don't envy the people at brands like Marin that are trying to hit a certain price point and are like, man, yeah, we'd love an air adjustable fork, but that's just going to bump it out of its price range. So you can't have everything and an affordable price. All right, let's get this thing on the geometer and measure it to see what the actual geometry looks like. 
Seeing it on the ground, you'll realize just how much standover they had. A lot of people like a really straight line from the head tube to the dropout. And even this kinks down a little bit because that is so low. So you've got tons of standover. I'm a huge fan of this. It makes it look like a little kid's bike. Well, remember the dropper's down, but it does. It makes it look like a little kid's bike because the frame's so small and compact. And I love small compact frames. It helps you do more technical maneuvers, bigger bunny hops, bigger manuals, bigger wheelies, bigger technical like up and offs and, and drops and stuff where the frame's not in the way. We've all ridden older bikes with the top tube up here where the seat didn't go down much and it just felt like the bike was in the way. So even though we've got aggressive angles, lots of travel and a big wheelbase, the frame doesn't feel huge, at least in theory. We'll see when we take it out on the trail, but it should make for a very confidence inspiring ride, at least in the sense that I could hop off if I need to, the frame's not in the way, um, it can feel low and planted. That's what I'm hoping and I'm excited for that. But seeing it on the ground, you can totally see, dang, they really went out of their way to give that some excellent standover. There are very few bikes that I can straddle and flat foot on the ground and this is one of them. Bravo, Marin. All right, time to measure the geo. Rear center is 425. Chain stay is 428. This is a size medium. I'm five foot six with really short legs and a really long torso. I got the torso of somebody 5'10", so I usually like longer bikes and I like sizing up. And with this lower top tube, it's easier for me to size up and not run into my droppers being too long. Reach on this size medium is 445. Great, right where I like to see it. Wheelbase, 1187. Effective top tube is 580. All right, head tube angle measured at the stanchions, 64.1. Seat tube angle, which is also actual and effective since it's a completely straight line all the way to the center of the bottom bracket, 77.2. Nice steep seat angle. Bravo, Marin, those are very modern numbers. So final weight came in at 33.78 pounds. That's with pedals. I've got tubes in it right now. And when you're, you know, when you're pushing that under $1,500 price range, you're going to get some things that are a little bit heavier. They always say pick light, strong, or inexpensive. Pick two of those three. Now looking at this rear tire, it looks like there's a ton of clearance in here. This comes with 2.6s on it right now. I'm gonna throw my 27.5 by 3.0 in here to see if it fits. I think it might, that would be insane. Center lock rotors on here. Eh, I might have to pull this brake off to fit this, let's see. My goodness, this might fit. That is a big ask to fit a 3.0, let's see. Woo, it's close, let me show you. Up top, we got plenty of clearance. I can fit my finger in between that side. And this side, we've got at least seven mil clearance. Down below, that's got, oh, I'm gonna say seven to eight mil clearance. That side has maybe two or three mil. So if you dish this wheel, you could probably get three mil on each side. That's probably a little bit tight for most people. But I feel confident saying most 27.5 by 2.8s are gonna fit on here. Now I work really hard on my videos and I try to be as detailed as possible and get you as much information as possible, especially in these first looks. And I throw wheels on with different tire sizes. And if you benefit from that and you appreciate that and you wanna see more of it, show your thanks by using one of those donation buttons in the link below. This is Hardtail Party. We love all things hardtail and I've ridden more modern hardtails than anyone on the planet. If you wanna pick my brain and compare, how does this compare to the Nuke Proof Scout or the Common Sol or the Ragley or whatever, or you want my advice for what the perfect hardtail is for you, become a patron today. I have that service over on Patreon, patreon.com slash hardtail party. We'll consult together. You can tell me what your riding style like, what, what you're looking for in a bike, what you like about your current bike and what you don't like about your current bike. And I can help steer you the right direction to find the perfect bike for your budget and riding style. And I'd love to help you over there so that's our first look where we take a look at everything and measure everything. What it really comes down to is how this bike rides on the trail. So coming up, I'm gonna take this on my home trails in Sedona, Arizona, 
ride it all over the place and tell you what it does great at and what it's not quite as good at as other things so that you can make an informed decision to know if this is the right hardtail for you. So if you wanna see that video and you don't wanna miss it, make sure you're subscribed, hit that like button, hit the thumbs up if you learned something today, and you'll get notified when I drop my ride review of this bike to see what it really rides like. Is this fork a deal breaker? Or is it wonderful and I misjudged it in this first look? We're gonna find out. Huge props to Marin for making an affordable bike with great geo and awesome specs. Thanks for watching everybody. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited. One other thing worth mentioning is this has a 30.9 millimeter seat post. I don't know why they're doing that. It's a less common size and that means a lot of people transferring parts from another bike over, their seat post isn't gonna fit like a 31.6. One other thing to note is that even though this is Dior 11 speed, the cassette is a Sunrace 11 speed, 11 to 51 tooth. Nice range, but it's not a Shimano product. And the chain is a KMC chain. One other place they save money is going with wire bead non-tubeless tires. So if you wanna go tubeless, you're gonna have to upgrade the tires, which is gonna be 100 to, maybe even $200 depending on which tires you end up with.